So now that I've finished levels 8 and 4, which are pretty big levels, I'm going to do the small levels now. Got my full set of bombs and I got my wand. So I'm as good as I'll ever be. I don't have an arrow yet. I mean, I'll have a bow and arrow. But, uh, they're not really that important right now. I'll pick them up on my way to getting all the Triforce pieces. But I'm not going to make a special trip out for it. So here's level 1. It's in the same place as first quest level 1. But it's shaped differently, of course. And it's got this really nice room where you can get bomb drops pretty easily if you don't die. So, this is where you'd want to go if you don't want to buy bombs. You just run in here, clear out this room, see if you can get a bomb. And if you don't, you can just leave the dungeon and come back. And clearing out that room gives you the boomerang, but that's a banned item in the second quest and the first quest. So, I'm not allowed to get it. I was just using the room for bombs. And these skeleton guys didn't used to be able to shoot swords. They can only do that in the second quest, not the first quest. We got a compass. And they just can't line up with a fairy. I didn't even need to get it. I have full health. I was just flying around, and I thought I'd try to grab it. Got the map. It's pretty easy to get. Headed up to another room where I have a little mini boss to kill. No problem there. And I went around and up instead of through the locked door so I can save the key. Thanks to VGMaps.com for having really good dungeon maps. It showed me the best ways to get around places. So I'm trying to get a bomb drop here. Uh, they don't want to give one to me. So, just gonna go into the next room and clear it out. So right this guy again, and you have to kill him the same way as the first quest level 1 boss. Just make sure you don't... Make sure you're uh, in the back behind him when you kill him. Because the heart container is going to be right in your way. And that's a complete level 1, and that is the only level in this challenge that I finish on a single life. You're probably thinking, well, how do you die in 
levels 2 and 3. I'll just have to wait and find out. Walking back to level 2. I'm just pushing myself through the enemies to, uh, because I think once I get inside level 2 I can die and continue, but actually died on the way to level 2. So I'm going to run back up to level 2, this is going to be, and fast forward to save the trouble of watching the same thing again. You can see about half the map's already completed because this is the room that I got the recorder in. It was the first dungeon I visited. I had to dodge all these mummies since I didn't have any weapons besides bombs. Just, uh, checking. I'm not sure what I was doing there. Maybe I was trying to decide if I should go in this room or... What? Oh, I was, I was checking to see if I had already finished all the rooms above me. If I was good to go over this way. Which I am. And I shouldn't have got hit there. But I'm just not playing very carefully. In this room, if you clear it out, you can get a bomb drop. And also, the knights themselves are pretty good at giving bombs. Of course, if you get run into, when you only have one heart, you die. So, I'm gonna get back up to that room I was in. Checking my map. Okay, so I'm back in this room. Of course, none of them want to give me a bomb. But I do get one from the room. So that was nice. This room I could have entered from the other side with a key. But I like saving keys. It's good practice. Make sure you don't run out. Still don't get a bomb drop. I do get the compass. Get another key. Got a nice little collection of keys now. These guys, they could give you a bomb, they could give you a heart, I could use both of them. Get a bomb there, get a heart there. These guys could also give you a bomber heart, so I'm 
Let's see if maybe I can get one of those from all of them. So I got a bomb from the room, I got a fairy. Now I'm at full power to face the two-headed Leoc here. And he's not scary, he's only got two hits. Five hits, knock off the first one, three hits to finish the second one, and that's that. Just make sure you're not on the right side so you don't get knocked into the heart container. Next up is walking over to level 3. I could die and save it, but since this segment wasn't particularly difficult, and uh, walking to level 3 isn't particularly dangerous, I figured I'd just walk over to it and see what happens. I don't have meat, so I have the recorder equipped because the recorder can't kill any overworld enemies. In the first quest, level 2 is on a hill in the east part of the overworld. And the second quest, level 3, is in the same square. Except it's a different overworld square. It's one of the empty fairy fountain that you have to load a recorder and get the level to open. There are not very many overworld squares that are changed in appearance between the first and second quest. square where first quest level 2 is, no, first quest level 3 has a different square also. So here I am in 3. If you're playing casually, this is the shortest dungeon in the game. This room here is the boss room. This is the room where you get your heart container. And just make sure you know where the heart container is going to appear so you don't stand on it by accident. It always appears in the same, the same place, it's not random. This level's kind of a trick, because when you get the compass, it shows the Triforce to be in the very top left of the map, if you're looking at the map screen. So it looks like this level is enormous. You've got to fight through all those rooms to get from where your square is to where the, uh, blinking, the blinking square is. But it's not until you try every bomb and every wall that you can visit before you find out that you actually have to go back to the compass room to push the block, and then you're right there under it. So I guess that's just a joke. As being the extreme challenge, I can't just uh, go on to the next level from here. I've got to go back into level 3 visit all the rooms. Now from the looks of it, you might think the extreme second quest is easier than the Extreme First Quest. If you remember, the early game of the Extreme First Quest had a lot of uh, things I had to do with bombs before I was able to get the wand. There were a lot of whiz robes I had to fight through. But the Extreme Second Quest difficulty is all about level 7. And also, at level 8, it's really easy to get lost and get confused, or possibly even miss 
killing one of the bosses of the dungeon because there's so many. And you gotta remember which ones you've killed and which ones you haven't, because when you kill them once, there's still the possibility that they'll respawn. And here's where I find out that I forgot to buy the meat so long ago. Um, so I'm trying to decide what to do, whether I should try to find a 100 rupee meat shop or go back to the 60 rupee meat shop. But the first thing to do is die, and if I save it then I can try to find a meat shop on the way to 3. And if I continue, then I can leave 3 and just go up to the top right shop since it's not too far away. And so I'm going to the top right shop to buy some meat. And I'm trying to walk back to level 3, but I get killed on the way. So I save it and run back to level 3 from the first square. So I'm back in level 3, walk through the rooms I've already been in. And finally get back to the meat room. This is the last room of the dungeon. There's nothing to get from this room, so I'm just going to die and save it, and that is all of level 3. Next up is level 5, since I've already finished level 4. I've got three more pieces of the Triforce to get. Level 5 is another dungeon that I haven't visited yet, so it's going to be have to be completed from nothing. So, going into level 5, you need to have full bombs. You need to have all 16 bombs. Because there's a room coming up where you have a lot of blue whiz robes to fight through. And they're easy to defeat, but you do have to have full bombs. So, make sure you save it after you have 16 bombs. And then make clearing out that blue whiz robe room your first priority in level 5. That way, if you die, or if you run out of bombs, then you can just reset and start that segment over, starting with 16 bombs. So I'm taking a slight detour into this room over here. Um, to get the key. And this room over here, it's coming up. It is full of blue wizards, but there's a really neat trick that I found out um, to clearing them out. Just make sure you have your bombs equipped when you go into the room. And lay one immediately, like mash the button. And then lay another one immediately, in the same spot. And lay your third one a little to the left. One, two, three. And then leave the room, and come back. One, two, three and just keep doing that until they're all dead. And sometimes that last one is on the bottom row, so you'll have to adapt when you get into the room. I accidentally got hit there, because I was thinking he'd be on the bottom row. But, as you can see, I'm down to a single bomb, so that's why it's important to enter with full bombs. There's a Goma here, and I can't defeat him at this time because I don't have a bow, but there's a bow. So 
so... This is not a difficult fight. You don't have any other statues shooting fireballs at you. You will later. But, not for this one. Finally, the beeping can stop for now. But it's never too far away, that beeping. Happens all too often. Not allowed to buy any potions that refill my health. Not allowed to have any rings that increase my defense. So I gotta take what I get. to get the compass. And if you want to know what the shape of all these rooms are, you only have to play them a couple times to get used to it. Um, nothing's stopping you in the rules from using a candle to turn the lights on, but for the rooms that I'm familiar with, I usually just leave them dark to save myself a little time. the compass. That key is a little hard to get without something being in your way, but you only have to get it once, and if you die, it's not a big level. So here I am, at Manhandler. But, I just can't get out of the way, so. Instead of going straight back to him, I'm gonna save it. And uh, I'm going to go buy some bombs to fill them back up. And this will be in fast forward because I'm just buying bombs. Kind of feels like on these uh, fast forwarded sections that uh, Benny Hill music should be playing. But that's kind of cliche by now, so I'm going to not go through the trouble of trying to mix that into the video. Just hum it to yourself. Anyway, I'm back here, and I was thinking, you know, I've never actually killed one of these with a sword or a wand. I've always used bombs. So I was seeing how hard it was. That's a little tricky, you know, gotta get lucky. But with the white sword or with the wand, he's only gonna take two hits for each, uh, what are those? Mouths? Clams? And I get killed by a bat. I get killed by a bat. And I wasn't trying to get killed. It just happened. So, I'm gonna run back through the dungeon. Get a hard drop from the, uh, slimes. They're usually pretty good at giving a hard drop. And sometimes if you kill the right bat, all the other bats will disappear instantly. And so now we've got a three-headed Gleok. And I'm just I'm playing a little aggressively right here. You can see I'm, I'm rushing in a lot to try to get a hit in. Um, because I wasn't really scared of him, but I was also not respecting him. I was not respecting that he actually is pretty dangerous and he only takes three hits to kill me. But I thought, yeah, I'll rush in, I'll knock him out, and that'll be it. He only needs one more hit to die. But of course, so do I, and I'm the one that gets hit. So, we're going to run back through the dungeon, all the way up to the Gliok again. And we're back. So 
I'm making another try. And I don't think I'm going to be so aggressive this time. See, I'm uh, dodging more and running up less. But uh, now I'm staying pretty close up to him, so... Whatever. Getting knocked around a bit, but uh, managed to finish. And that looks like it was my next attempt after losing to the Gliok that I just went straight up to and killed him. But that was actually my fifth attempt later. I just took out the four that failed for an interest of time and, you know, so it's not so long. And do you really want to see me fail four times? If you do, you should just watch this live on Ustream when I do it. There's a whole lot of fail going on on Ustream. Anyway, this is the trimmed down, but still complete, extreme second quest. I'm not cutting out any life that accomplishes something. So even if the thing that I accomplish is just uh, unlocking the next door, or loading up one room in the dungeon, it still counts, and those are still in. So, for example, in level 5, that just passed, um, something I would take out would be if I'm trying to get back up to the Gliok and I die in the second room just by a couple of whiz robes. That would be taken out because nothing happens. So, the VHS tape that this is recorded on doesn't have any re-recording on it. It just goes, it recorded straight through all the failures and all the deaths. So, when I send that to Twin Galaxies, the referee is going to have to watch it from start to finish without the benefit of being trimmed down for it to be accepted as a successful Extreme Second Quest completion. And I just opened up a secret there on that Overworld Square, and it's a Second Quest exclusive secret, but it's just a money-making game. so. There's nothing I have to go into. So here I am, back at level 6. And this is the second dungeon that I went into when I started the Extreme Challenge here on the second quest. This is the one where I got the ladder. So, what I'm doing in that room is clearing it out so that every time I go into it from now on, there won't be any wizards in it. In rooms that have bubbles, like the blue and orange bubbles that are running around right now, the room will carry over through a death and through a continue. As long as you don't leave the dungeon, it'll just stay cleared out. Sometimes these rooms are, are a little hard to get through without getting hit. But they're really early on in the dungeon, so you don't have to walk too far to get back to them. You can see the uh, wall spikes in all the corners there. That's another thing that'll keep a room from filling back up if you clear it out. So I've cleared out all of the like likes in the room. And they're going to stay gone, because there are wall spikes in there. He's a helpful old man, although I'm not actually sure what that clue is about. I think it's about how to find level 8, now that I think about it. Anyway. Grab the compass. I already got my map. There's a bit of confusion on what this dungeon's shape represents. I believe it's Link's head 
if you picture Link looking to the left with his nose sticking out and his, his cap falling back like that. I mean, if you just look at the sprite for Link, he kind of has that head shape when he's looking to the left. And considering level 9 is Ganon's face, it would make sense that there's a level that's also Link's head. Of course, that implies that you agree that level 9 is actually Ganon's face. Pretty sure it is. Some people think it looks like a mouse. You're entitled to your opinion. So I've got my one heart, and I'm not expecting to complete the level. But, you always want to try your best. So we've got a little two-headed Gleok in here. Not the boss, just somebody in the way. Fireballs. If you see a fireball going across the screen, it's a safe time to run up and hit him because you can only shoot one at a time. As long as you know that as soon as the fireball leaves the screen, he's going to throw another one immediately. This guy I haven't been too lucky with in this game. I usually end up getting hit at some point by a fireball or just by running into him. But this time it goes well. I mean, I don't hit him with my bombs enough, and I have to finish him off with the one. But he's dead, and that's good. And so here's the blue Goma, the boss, the uh, last boss of this level. Let's get a Triforce room above him. But he hurts when he hits you. If you walk into the boss itself, I think it takes away two hearts. If you get hit by a Goma's fireball, it takes away a full heart. And if you get hit by a wall statue fireball, it takes away half a heart. So if you have to get hit, get hit by one of the wall statues. But if you have half a heart, you should probably not try to get hit at all. And that was so lame. I killed the boss, and then died. And since I didn't leave the room after killing the boss, it doesn't count. Um, it would count for the challenge if there was uh, no other reason to visit that room. But since I have to get the Triforce that's behind it, it means I have to kill him again. So I'm just uh, running back to that room. Now I'm there again, here to make another try. Every time you enter a room with a Goma in it, make sure you're mashing the fire button for your arrow. Because you can sometimes get a free hit just um, just by entering and shooting as fast as possible. And it worked out this time, I got my free hit and I got a second hit. And that heart container is um, not one you're going to be worried about stepping on because it's above the Goma and if you're going to kill the Goma you have to be below it to shoot up, obviously. But, it's nice to know. So I've got one more track over piece left. So you might be wondering, well, how is there another hour and a half left of the video? Oh, when you get to level 7, you'll see. So, I am headed towards level 7 now. A couple years ago, I played through the second quest without any guides or walkthroughs, and level 7 
it took me... I think it took me, like, four days to find. Because... When you're looking for level 7, you first try bombing every rock that you can find. And since you didn't find it that way, you try to blow the recorder on every square, and it still doesn't show up, so... By then you figure out, alright, well it's gotta be behind a bush. But you only have the blue candle. And you're thinking, did I miss the red candle in one of the earlier levels? But you didn't. So you have to bomb every bush that you can find. But since you have the blue candle, you can only burn one bush per screen. So you try one bush, and if it doesn't work out, you have to leave the screen and come back to try the next one. And it takes forever. And this is the worst bush possible to try, because you can't open it and enter it on the same screen. You have to open it from one side and then walk all the way around to enter it on the other side. Anyway, so finding level 7 is ridiculously difficult, but if you know where it is, then it doesn't seem so bad, because it's always there. Once you find it once, then you're okay. So I'm in level 7, and I'm just starting out by adding a couple rooms to my sub-screen map. Rooms that don't lead anywhere or do anything else in the level. I got the compass from the slime room on the left there. You're gonna see a lot of this room. It probably would have been a good idea to buy some bombs before I went into level 7. It's too late for that now. And this room, since it has bubbles in it, means it's going to clear out and stay cleared out. And this room also has got bubbles in it, so just clear it out once and be done with it. That is, of course, if you don't leave the dungeon, which this time I do have to do. But for now, it's nice practice to clear it out. this guy. I thought that was a good spot, but it wasn't, and I ended up dead because of it. So let's continue and uh, get back up, get back up to him and try again. This uh, staircase I haven't taken yet, so I'm gonna go in here just to add some rooms to my sub-screen map. Remember, part of the extreme challenge is to visit every room of every dungeon. I don't need to clear out this room, but I'm kind of seeing if maybe. One of the red knights will give me a bomb drop. But they didn't. get pretty lucky here. I start off trying to uh, take him out with the wand, but then I realize he's probably going to get too fast for me to dodge. So I quit the wand and I, you know, get out the bomb. Of course, I've only got two. 
but the second one knocks off the last three of his mouths. And that's that. I don't have to kill him again. This room's got the map in it. There's a strip of water that runs across where you see the ladder. It just goes straight across, so you're never in danger of the guys on the north side of it if you just hang out on the water part. So this room you're also going to see a lot. There's five blue dark knots in it, and it's uh, just about exactly like the room in the first quest, level 8, that I had to chip away at. So we're going to get back to that, but the first thing I'm going to do is go buy some bombs. I've got some money, and I know there's a bomb shop pretty nearby, so... Gonna fill them up again. And it's going to save me the trouble of trying to get bombs inside the dungeon, which I'm going to have to do later, but not right now. So, back here in level 7. This room you're going to see a lot too. This room you're going to see because that's where I'm going to be doing my bomb harvesting from the Red Knights in that room. And since I left the dungeon and came back, all the rooms that I cleared out are now filled back up. But even with that, it's, it was faster to leave buy bombs and come back and try to clear out these rooms again than it was to stay in the dungeon and try to get bombs in. I'm not doing too good about clearing out this room. about uh, when you're standing on the water here is that sometimes you can hit enemies that are behind you. You'll see that happen a few times. I'm not sure why that is, but I'll take it if they're giving it to me. to this uh, five dark knot room. And just like the extreme first quest, level eight, when I kill one of the blue knights, I can leave the room and preserve it that way with one down. since I'm doing kind of badly just reaching her. I'm not going to last here very long. So I walk in. Trying to dodge. And uh, get a hit in while I can. And that guy, I think he has three hits taken away already, so I got one down, but then I leave able to come back, and uh, there was only going to be four there, which is good, so that if I die, on my next life, there will still only be four. And I've got it down to three, but I'm not allowed, I'm not able to leave the room in time. So I'm going to fast forward just to get back up to that room, and you're going to see how this is going to go. I mean, I'm going to run through the rooms that lead up to it. And the 
these rooms are cleared out, so I'm back in here. I'm gonna try to chip them away. I killed one, so it's down to three. Now it's down to two. And I died. So I'm running back. So it's down to one. And usually I would die and continue to make sure I finish the room with full life. But I'm feeling kind of confident. So I'm going to push through. This room you don't have to kill. It's kind of scary trying to dodge everything. But you can usually get through it pretty pretty well if you've got your head in the right place. Got a blue Goma. He's not that scary because you don't have statues in the corners of the room. They're just in the middle of the room. I remember last year when I did the Extreme First Quest, I was looking at the maps on bgmaps.com for the second quest and wondering if it would be reasonable to try to do the Extreme Second Quest. And it was Level 7's map that I looked at and I said, there is no way I'm going to do the Extreme Second Quest. There are so many blue Dark Knights in Level 7, and they hurt so much when they hit you. They take off two hearts from one hit. This is like twice as difficult as level 8 of the first quest. But anyway, here I am in level 7 on the extreme second quest, which I successfully completed twice. Uh, the first time was just for testing to see if it was possible. And uh, then the second time was this time here to uh, go all the way and get it recorded on VHS. But before doing this attempt that you're watching, I did the first seven levels, you know, levels one through six, and also level eight. Um, I ran through them uh, twice more, so it's my fourth time going through levels one through six and eight, and my second time successfully getting through levels seven and nine. So. The important stuff is on the right. There's a couple of map rooms on the left. So this you only have to do once. You grab the minus heart, and you lose all your health. In this room you have to grab the heart again. I'm not sure if you actually have to do that room. Like, I know you have to visit it, but I'm not sure if you have to actually completed. You might just be able to kill yourself, but that would actually take longer than just doing the minus heart, so. No big deal. These guys, I'm trying to get a heart drop. to add to my map, but I don't need to do anything else to it. I just look at it and leave. The room above me I've already been in. It was one of the first rooms I entered. It has uh, orange bubbles in it, I think. So I'm back in the manhandler room. If you want to do the extreme second quest, you gotta be prepared to uh, do this Dark Knight room over and over and over. As you can see, it's filled back up, and I've gotta chip them away until they're dead. So. 
This is the cut down version of the second quest. I took out all the failed attempts. And at this point, I'm looking at my my VHS outline that I wrote out here. And it looks like nine times, my next nine lives, I failed to kill a single blue dark knight in that room. And this is the successful one here that you're watching. The the tenth try. So, you might think I'm not a very good Zelda player, now that I've revealed that. But the truth is, if you're not 100% concentrating on where all the fireballs are going, you're gonna get hit. And of course the first nine tries were all with the wand, and I was just so tired of it that I went in with all my bombs, and decided to clear out the room with my bombs instead of with my wand. So what am I, what am I, what's my goal here? My goal is to get up to the second important blue dark nut room and try to trim it down. So all the work I've done, all those failed lives, and all the bombs I'm using here, is only working toward reaching the second blue dark knight room and hopefully trimming its numbers. So here's walking through this room again. And for the most part, I'm going to let these parts play at full speed and not fast forward, um, because walking through those blue dark nuts rooms is kind of like base, but it's also based on making sure you're watching where they're headed. And this is such a bad room, there's I think eight of them in here, and you gotta get to that top door make two mistakes, you're dead. If you make one mistake, you're almost dead. So I'm down to half a heart. I've got no chance of getting a heart drop until I get to the second room. So I'm deciding whether I should try to do the manhandler in the room above me, or this room. So I go for this room. And if you just hang out in the door frame, you're not going to get hit. six of them right now. Wasting my bombs. I got one left. There. I killed two with that. And I want that heart, but it's kind of hard to reach. And now it's gone. So, I got my wand. And I'm going to try to see what I can do against the four with just my wand. But I get backed into a corner. There's no way I can get all four hits in. And I get run into. And you know what that means? Being out of bombs, I've got to go into the second room. And try to get a bomb drop. But since there's not enough enemies in it right now, I have to clear out the room. leave the room. Now the next time I die, that second room will be filled up. It'll have all the enemies in it that I need, including two of the red knights that are going to be my potential bomb droppers. And I might as well clear out this room, so it'll be easier to walk through next time. Now I'm okay to die and continue.
so still walking. Just uh, trying to get some bombs. The red knights are your only source of bombs in this room. I got a bomb there, so I'm gonna die and continue and try the room again. So I'm gonna fast forward it a bit. And you're only going to be seeing the successful lives, the ones where I get a bomb. There were... Looks like... 12 lives. 12 of these tries that I did not get a bomb. So now I've got all 16 in this trimmed down version. And I'm walking over. And I'm going to clear out the room again. Except, use my bombs without my wand. And... Without leaving the room, I got it down to... one. So now I've saved the room. And... die. Because I got hit once, and instead of trying to finish off the room, Missing a half heart, I thought it would be best to die and try again. And I got a bomb drop just now, which was nice. But my real goal was to get back to that room. So, headed back to the first Blue Dark Knight room. Full health, so I'm good to go on. 